Okay, so. Python on Raspberry uh, Pi, that, October uh, 2014. Turn the presentation over. Uh, everybody got their. We're doing this via Google Hangouts, so people out in the real world can watch it live. We're also recording uh, the video on a couple of video cameras. We do have a YouTube channel out there where we're throwing these videos, so if you ever want to tell your friends about it and go watch the video, uh, you can do that. Uh, the Hangout is an on-air, so that's going to get recorded as well. Yep. This is the real world. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, if everything's up and running, uh, at this point I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ben Rush. He's going to talk about uh, Raspberry Pi and sensors and Python, and I'm not even sure what all else. That sounds about right. I think we're in for a real treat. So uh, Ben, go ahead. And all right. Have at it. Let's try to play the crowd. <laughs> Oh, refreshments. I did forget to mention refreshments. Uh, we do have a small set of refreshments here. It's a cooler with some, some pop and some water in it. Uh, and there's some cookies here. The deal is you put a dollar in the jar, you can take a can of pop and a cookie or two cookies. Um, and if you want to, you know, even if it's during the meeting, if you can just do it quietly, don't be afraid to get up and, uh, and grab one. I was a little brave today. I decided to present from the Pi itself. I do have a laptop in case it totally fails. <laughs> but I just thought this was cooler. Of course, it won't be as cool on my dad. It's the kind of thing you forget. Um, okay, are we recording yet? Are we ready? Yep. Uh, I'm Ben Rausch from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, I've been using Python for quite a long time five or six years. And uh, I started playing with Raspberry Pi about a year or two ago. Um, and this is pretty much the culmination of what I've done in that time. So this is a Raspberry Pi, in case you can't see up here, if you don't have one in front of you. Uh, it's a little tiny computer, Linux computer. This image has all of the parts labeled, but it's difficult to see, difficult to read them here. Uh, you've got USB 2 ports, you have HDMI for video, uh, your power is micro USB. The SD card slot up there is where you put your operating system on an SD card, obviously. Insert it. You have your GPIO ports in the upper left, and a couple of other uh, older. I guess analog video and audio, and an Ethernet port on this particular one. So you get quite a bit on this, this little tiny board, this little computer, and I'm using a lot of it right now. Almost all of those pieces. So I wanted to start uh, by teaching you how to set up your Raspberry Pi from nothing. Basically, you get a new Raspberry Pi, what do you do with this? Uh, you go to the Raspberry Pi website, you download the Raspbian image, uh, and you, you DD that to your SD card. So you write that image format to whatever SD card you happen to have hanging around. Uh, there's instructions for doing that on the website. Can you do it from Windows? Yes. yes you can do that from Windows. Um, you insert the card in, you boot it up, 
and the login, everyone always has to look up the login because you don't know what it is, but it's it's Pi and the password's Raspberry. Uh, at that point, you you do an RPi update. And what this does is updates the firmware on the Raspberry Pi. So there's updates every few months. So you probably have one waiting. Uh, when that's done, I think it'll just ask you to reboot, but if it doesn't, reboot it. Uh, so step five, once you get back in, you run sudo apt-get update, because this is a Debian-based uh, distro. The Raspbian is Debian-based. Um, you do the just upgrade, and then you go into sudo raspi config, and this lets you set up a bunch of Raspberry Pi specific things, such as the camera, uh, a bunch of internationalization options that are sometimes hard to set up if you're not used to it, and then reboot it again, and you're all up to date, you're all good to go. Any questions about that? Can you do all from a remote terminal like SSH into it? Uh, it does not come with SSH turned on, I believe, so you'll have to install OpenSSH server and then one of the, that one of the things the Raspi config turns on the SSHD. You can turn it in the config? Okay. Yeah, the first time you actually have to have a composite or you have to have HDMI, run that and then the SSHD. But you do have to figure out what the IP address is for. <laughs> right. Know, there are. Yeah, that's always the fun part when, you, when you're headless. this. So, you have your Raspberry Pi, um, and so you want to do some projects with it, right? And this is where a lot of people sort of fall down. They have this Pi, they think, oh, this is so cool, like this little, little Linux computer, I can do so much with it. What the heck am I going to do with it? Uh, so I'm going to walk through basically two things today. I'm going to walk through using a camera, a webcam, with your Pi, and uh, using the GPIO ports. So the first thing we'll talk about is the webcam. Um, I have here about a 10-year-old USB webcam working pretty well on here. Uh, so to deal with this in Python, Python is my favorite programming language, um, and a lot of the things you'll see for Ras uh, Raspberry Pi are in Python. It's just, it comes pre-installed and ready to go. So simple CV is, is a wrapper for webcam and for machine vision libraries complicated stuff like OpenCV and other similar things like that that can be difficult to get into. Simple CV wraps those and makes it easier. Um, it works with a lot of different USB and like laptop built-in webcams. So it's really nice in that there. Yeah. You talk about Python, what was the main development? If you're doing C++, where do you develop, you know a better Raspberry Pi compiler? Or do you have a place How outside like cross-compiler and whatever? How do you develop in C++ for Raspberry Pi? I have no idea. Uh, you, you, could do it either way. you could cross compile on a, on a big machine or, or you can compile right on a Raspberry Pi. Yeah, I mean you have basically all of the Debian tools available to you on the Raspberry Pi. I don't know how much you actually want to compile on the Pi itself because it's, it's a 700 megahertz processor. So Small things one. work. Uh, the kernel takes um, Hours and hours <laughs> to compile your own kernel. I have a kernel on the rest well, <coughs> When you want to change the module, I also have to you know, structure for cross compiling. And I had created a Pi kernel Matic on GitHub that um, one of the things it does is pulls the cross compiling <coughs> and will recompile it on a faster machine. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <coughs> you can do that. Well, Python is uh, what version 3 or 2.7? 2.7 and 3.2 are both included on the Raspberry Pi, the Raspbian distro, I should say. The simple CV, is, uh, simple CV, I'm using <coughs> Python 2.7 today. Uh, I think it also works with, with remote too. <coughs> uh, yeah, so it works, simple CV works with a lot of USB webcams, which is nice. Uh, it also, the code you'd write works on Linux, Windows, and OS 10. Simple CV is available for all of them. And for more information on Simple CV after this, you can see this tutorial. It's the easiest way, I think, to get started with it. Uh, and it, it's kind of interesting. I gave this talk a little while ago to my local Python group, and I used the Raspberry Pi camera. They sell a special camera just for the Raspberry Pi. It plugs into uh, one of these ports, and it, it works really well. And there is a special Python module just for using that Raspberry Pi camera on the Raspberry Pi. 
it's really nice. But I had trouble with that camera after I did uh, one of the firmware updates. And so just like two days ago, I ended up switching to the generic webcam. So that was interesting. But <coughs> what I found it is in doing that, I switched to Simple CV from that specific module. And I, I'm really impressed with how easy it was to convert all my code over to Simple CV and make it you know, cross-platform at the same time. That Raspberry Pi camera only applies to the Raspberry Pi. So I'm kind of happy with that switch. So how do you install Simple CV? It's really pretty easy. Um, you go to the download site and they have a link to the Simple CV version 1.3 Super Pack. And that clicking that sends you to Source Forge and to the correct uh, installer for your system. So on uh, Raspberry Pi, it's the <coughs> of this uh, dev file. You just go in, you dpac g i install that. Uh, it won't work, of course, because there's a bunch of missing dependencies, so you have get install f that fixes all your dependencies and installs them. And then I found a bug in this version, uh, basically it's in all the Debian versions, where there's a PNG missing that it expects to be in a certain place. So in the, in the code I have for this talk, there's a little script you can run that goes out, gets the image, and sticks it <coughs> in the right place. I'm sure they'll have it fixed soon, so you may not need that. So now we're going to get into some demos and some code. So the first one you may have seen before is a live view. And all these things take a little while to sort of warm up and start. It's just a case of the Raspberry Pi being slow. So what we have here is a live view from the webcam, which is mounted right down here. So Mark, can you your hand? Hi. There we go. <laughs> um, up, up on the screen here, it looks pretty bad, but really it, it looks nicer. I mean, it's just a case of the of projector making it look weird. Washed out, I guess. So we got a live view. Um, it's a good way to start because then you know, hey, my webcam is working. This this live view has other utilities. If you get further into Simple CV, um, it will track where your mouse is and tell you what color is under that cursor. Um, and what that does, it helps you when you're making more uh, more complex programs to sort of figure out what to do. So that's just kind of a cool extra bonus here. So let's look at that. Code for that. See just how hard it is to set that up. <laughs> <laughs> so we're importing from that simple CV module we installed earlier. Uh, just the camera part of that. Um, you can set your camera settings. It defaults, I think, to 320 by 240 or some tiny little thing. Um, if you're displaying on the on the Pi. You sort of play with those settings because it can change from webcam to webcam and the size of your monitor and all this stuff. But 640 by 480 is pretty safe. I was able to go up to 1600 by 1200, but doing that would, you know, be bigger than the screen, so it's hard to deal with. Um, so we create an instance of the camera, cam equals camera. Um, you, it can deal with more than one camera. Zero is the first camera. Uh, if you have more than one, then they're, you know, one, two, three, and so on. Um, and then the camera size you send into your instance of camera, and you turn on live, and that turns on the live. So you can see it starts out really simple, just for getting your camera up and running. Um, the next one I'm going to show you. Let's see if we can get this going. I'm starting Chrome here on the Raspberry Pi. Sometimes that can take a minute. Down here I have the the. Uh, this is the CPU usage, and this is the RAM. So you can see right now it's pegged, just starting to go here. Okay. Uh, so the next one I'm going to do Stream from the uh, webcam onto an 
and JPEG stream, which you could you can send over a web you could do in a web browser. And Uh, there are some available, yeah. But it doesn't really help with this particular thing. Go. Um, you know. <coughs> it's hard to see, but I'm just going to localhost 480, which should pick up that stream. So now, there we go. We've got the live stream. It's quite a bit slower. You can see we're really taxing the CPU, but usually you would view this from a different computer, not from the Raspberry Pi itself. That's a little bit silly. Uh, is Chromium part of Raspbian? Uh, it is available in Raspbian, yes. Chromium. Chromium is this, this web browser. It's the open source part of Chrome. So it works really similar to it. I think that's the only thing I need Chromium for. So let's look at the code for setting up that, that uh, live stream from the camera to the web. So it's on port 8080, you could easily pipe that out through your firewall or whatever. Get it with itself. So the code's a, a little more complicated, but really we're importing just the camera and the, the JPEG streamer, and that's what handles most of the work for you. We've got our camera size settings again, and in this case we have the frame rate, which I'm using 15 frames a second. Um, you can play with that. It depends on your webcam and the high speed and that sort of thing. Um, streaming the local host, here's the port, and the length. I only stream for one minute, then it shuts down. Um, so we again create that same camera instance, and we set up a stream with the JPEG streamer to the host host port we specify, and the ST is the uh, is the frame rate basically that it's going to do. So it's going to do one per 15, so every fifteenth of a second, it's going to refresh that image. Um, <coughs> is there an option to do sound or audio with it? Uh, not with. Not built into simple CD. I mean, this is really just image case. So is the simple CD just one library? Yes. Python script, so you could yes. bring in audio. Right. If you wanted, you know, an actual audio and video stream, um, you wouldn't use simple CD. You'd use maybe like FFmpeg streaming or something like that. You'd use something else. This is really for for creating programs around. From the camera. I mean, if, if you're just like streaming video, there's there's stuff that'll do that for you in one step. Uh, I'm sort of laying the foundation for creating your own programs about around the image manipulation. And that sort of thing. I mean, there's like one liners that do audio and video stream for you. Okay, so now if, if you look down here, it's kind of interesting. What we're really doing is grabbing one image from the camera saving that and then sending it out into the stream. So it's it's not actually recording a video off that camera. It's taking still images at each frame and sending that out. And that's that's another case where we're not really streaming the video. Uh, we're, we're looking at each image so we can either analyze it or manipulate it. That's sort of thing. Okay, what's next? We got the live view, the live stream. Uh, next, we're going to, well, let's just save it for Everybody smile? Come up soon. Yeah, whoever's in front of the camera. Right?
Yeah, it still says that. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> There's a picture. So how hard is it to just save a, a photo to this? Not much harder than that live stream. Um, we have a couple modules at the top, OS, the time. We're using OS just to make the, the path correct. So if we go to Windows, it will all nicely. Um, the time, I'm using just to see. So you can sort of ignore those. Uh, again, we just have the camera module from Simple CV, and I have another utility that I'll talk about when I finish with this. Uh, we got our camera size again. We just have a file name, which I'm putting in the pictures folder and naming it stillimage.png. Now when it saves this, it actually looks at the extension to figure out what kind of file you want to save it. <laughs> now down here, I had some issues with, with various webcams where you get into this too quick and it takes a picture and gets out, and the camera hasn't worked out. The camera's not really ready, so you get a black image. So I wrote this this uh, camera is ready function here is really just looking at that image. It, it looks at the image. Is this a black image? Okay. We're going to try again a second later. So we sleep for a second and go back in and try again. And, and with different cameras, it can take like two seconds. It can take half a second. It really depends on the camera. So I found this to be really handy. Um, but then as far as saving the image, we just go out from the camera, we get an image, and we save it as a file. That's all there is to it. Uh, let's look at that utility function for, for checking if the camera is ready. Um, we come in, we take the camera instance, we can debug just prints out the values. So if you don't want to see them, which you probably don't when you're actually in your program. Uh, you can turn that off. So it, it gets an image from the camera. It looks at one pixel, which is at the width of the image and the height of the image divided by two. So the center pixel in that image, it gets the RGB value for that pixel. Um, and if that, it adds them up. So if they come in as zeros, zero, zero, zero. Seems like an expensive way to see if the camera's ready, though, in terms of processing. I couldn't find another way to do it. There's I mean, no, it, it's really no not that. Or, uh, you're getting an image. Yeah. I mean, it'd be cheaper if you could. So not the camera it. should tell you that it's ready, or you should be able to ask the camera if it's ready. You should. I couldn't find anything that does that, though. Doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> so I just add them up. If it's greater than zero, that means, hey, we got a real picture. If it's zero, then we don't have a real picture, and it's not ready. Okay, uh, next we're going to save a GIF, which is kind of cool. I just figured this one out today. So what, what we're going to do here is it'll take, uh, I believe, five frames, one every second, and then it'll put those together into an animated GIF. So it's going right now. Take about five seconds. <laughs> I don't know if I actually sound high, so everybody stay perfectly still. Yeah, for me. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Here we go. Okay, so this is even fewer even support. There we go. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> there we go. We're not strong. Oh, that's so what? The video gets really annoying to record. I think this is a really handy way to do some animation with it. Sure. Yeah, let me give it to you. Um, look at that. Mm -hmm. So not too much worse than our saving just a photo because it's built in. We've got our camera and we have this time an image set. And that's a, like it says, a set of images. So a series of images are all stored in an array. Oh, okay. And then you can do various things with them. Um, camera size, I've got a half second, so when I generate that GIF, I want a half second between each frame. Uh, Ten seconds long. I've got a file name, so as long as it has that .gif extension, it'll save it as a GIF. We've got our good old camera is ready stuff. And we create the image set, and for, for calculating these frames, so we do the length, which is 10 seconds, 
and the interval, which is half a second, so we get five frames, basically, right? We get our image, we append it to that image set, and we sleep for what is it, half a second, two seconds, whatever it is, and then we get the next frame, and we append it to the next frame. <coughs> And when that's all done, when we have all of our images, we just save it with that file name and you give it the interval between the frames in the GIF. So, so you can have the interval that you're getting those images. Like I have a second between each image that I'm getting, but when I create that GIF, I have a half a second between each frame. So it's not real time. You, those are independent. You can mess with them, do whatever you want with them. So did that create one file? Yes. Okay. And it has several images in the file? Well, it created an animated GIF. I mean, okay. So, so it is. You know, it's uh, just a series of images. That, it's a series okay. of images with a delay between. With a delay. Okay. Yeah, you could bring that up in. Well, probably not in there. But GIMP, you could open that up in GIMP and see the separate. Yeah, I, I uh, wouldn't want to use GIMP. But yeah. <laughs> 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 Which is, well, that actually brings up a point. Um, because one of the original purposes for the Raspberry Pi is education, right? They want. They want kids to have a computer that they can plug in and use, but it's really pretty painful to get into things like image manipulation and you know, even it, web browsing is pretty. But it was education more to teach them how to how to program, program it yeah. than to actually I think image use processing it as a, is a fairly advanced topic. <laughs> I don't know creating an image in there. Yeah. You know that's yeah. not edifying. So it's. Okay. <clears throat> Is there any other way that you can do it for where you have like some security camera motion that actually Yeah, that, I'm going to get, we're going to keep building here. Cool. Um, so next we're going to save a, a video. Now this one might get a little sketchy. Because I had a little fun with using video on here. Um, the Raspberry Pi camera was really nice for video. The, the specialty one. Uh, you could do 1080p video, like no problem. Now you couldn't hardly watch it on the pod, but it would make really nice videos. Um, on here now, we're, we're recording the video. Uh, it's recording to an AVI. I'm not actually sure what the codec is inside. Can you use the full CV with the Raspberry Pi camera module? I don't know. You can certainly save your images out and then use simple CV to, to load them in. You can see the, the CPU. It's, it's supposed to be a 10 second video, but it's been longer than 10 seconds. You can see the CPU is, is packed here. Okay. Yeah. Camera's still on. Yep, camera's still on. We're still recording. So I'm never sure how long to wait before giving up on this one. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is one thing that prompted me to get into the animated GIFs, is the video is a little flaky to record. Worth noting that the Raspberry Pi has hardware accelerated H.264 if yeah. you save it as an H.264. I just couldn't get that. Okay, I I could get it to save as h 264s but I couldn't seem to get the resulting file to play on it. So, in theory, that's a great way to go. I don't know how well it actually works in practice with, with the webcam. With the Raspberry Pi camera, that works really well. <coughs> Make sure you play with it and you understand what you can record. Now, just because this isn't moving, this video might actually be fine when you view it on a different computer. Yeah. So don't trust what you see in your video review on the Pi. Because, like I said, the Raspberry Pi camera on there made beautiful videos that you couldn't even watch on here. Now, that, that Raspberry Pi you have, that's the Model B, but not the B Plus. Yes, right? this is just a Model B. So the CPU is faster on that one, too, isn't it? I'm not actually sure. Okay. 
Okay. That's our video. Uh,